the work that I do truly is challenging and every single day is different. I put plan sets together uh, in order for ro roads to get built. You're not going to be just sitting down on your desk doing map all day. You, you really are going to be doing rewarding work. I'm also a liaison with our local entities. I work with them as a project, project manager, making sure that um, their projects o overlap with ours correctly or vice versa, and we kind of work together to uh, make our road system one big network. You're going to get to meet people, and you don't have to stick to one, one place. TxDOT is a state agency. I also work with developers as well. Um, helping them with their plan sites and access from our road systems so that uh, their developments can help service the public. There is definitely a lot of opportunity for, for growth and learning uh, in your career. What defines you as an engineer is the work you do and the knowledge you present yourself with. There's diversity in our team. There's a lot of females in our team as well and I never feel like um, I'm different because we're all here for the same purpose of doing our jobs and learning. The projects that I work on are in my backyard. These are projects where I really feel I'm making an impact and I have a two-year-old, so I like to think that when he grows up and first jumps in the car and starts using our roads, he's gonna get to see what the impact that we made. We don't just do roads too, because part of our job is also looking at pedestrian sidewalks and elements of installing pedestrian crosswalks as well. So, I mean, we do all modes of transportation. Know this, know that what you're doing day one and the day that you hopefully get to build a career and retire with TxDOT, you're gonna have the most rewarding career possible. Now, I'm pleased to introduce our presenter, 2021 ASC Texas President, Sean Merrill. Sean currently works for BGE Inc. as an associate leading the North Texas Traffic Engineering Practice. He's previously been honored as the ASCE Dallas Branch Engineer of the Year, as well as the Edmund Freeman Young Engineer of the Year Award. He has served in many roles at ASC, including the Dallas Branch President and the Texas Section CE Con Chair in 2013. Currently, Sean is the ASC Texas Section President for 2020-2021 and is also the chair of the Frisco Parks and Recreation Board and the Collin County Planning Board. John received his Bachelor of Science and Master of Engineer degrees in Civil Engineering from Texas A&M University, where he served as the president of the ASC student chapter. Prior to college, Sean served in the U.S. Army as an Aero Scout observer in an OH-58 helicopter. Sean has been married to his beautiful and very understanding wife Elizabeth for 27 years, and they have two children, Sasha and Declan. John, please get started. Thank you. All righty. Thanks, everyone. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm sharing screen two. Can everybody see that? Title slide, Network for Young Engineers. All right, Jenny, I know one of the rules is to have everybody muted, but we don't have too many people on here, and this is networking for young engineers, so there will be some networking going on. So I would like everyone to be able to talk in a little while. Um, and if you're willing to share your cameras, that, that'll be great. I know it's early in the morning. Some of y'all may have just gotten up, but guess what? I just got up too, so <laughs> here we go. So networking for young engineers. Let me back up a little bit. This is the slide I usually start with. So <clears throat> networking for young engineers. Um, networking is your friend, really. How comfortable are you walking into a room and talking to people? Um, can y'all do that? Uh, I used to not be able to do that not be very comfortable about it. Uh, how do you approach a group of four to five people, especially older people that are established um, in, the, in the industry? How do you start a conversation and keep it going? And where do you sit when you walk in, maybe say to a, an awards banquet? These are some of the things that we're gonna answer today as we go through uh, this presentation. So again, here's some of the learning objectives. Uh, by the end of this presentation, I'm hoping that you'll be able to understand the basic questioning and active listening skills understand how to understand other people's interests, understand how to effectively network in a professional environment, and understand the importance of effective participation. Uh, if you're just a wallflower sitting on the side, you're not gonna get anything out of networking. So you really gotta open up and, and uh, learn how to network. So here, here we go. So what is networking? Uh, the definition in uh, 
Merriam-Webster's dictionary says networking is about building relationships, usually through personal contact. It's a learned skill. Some people seem to be naturals at networking. Some need to work hard to succeed, and some of us fail or fall or somewhere in between. In any case, part of the process of networking is learning how others do it, and most of all, and most of us do that through networking as, as well. So, is this networking? It is. It's a car salesman. He's selling a car. So, he's trying to create a network of people that will hopefully buy his product. Is that what you're going to be? I don't know. It depends on what type of engineer you're going to be. Is this networking? Being the fun, fun guy, doing fun stuff. That could be part of networking. Really, I would like to have a blend of all of this. So um, you can kind of see here's a little bit of networking going on around an office environment. Uh, people just kind of talking, chatting, collaborating, uh, working together. So that's really what we're talking about. So today, um, I want you to get the most out of this uh, presentation. So how are we going to do this? So I set a few ground rules. I really want folks to actively participate today. I want people to ask questions when you have them um, and answer the questions when they're asked. I want you all to stay awake. I want you to take notes if needed. Uh, I want you all to really utilize what you learned here today. This is going to be a very important class, I think, going forward. And I want you to strive to make yourself better. If you're here today on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. listening to me speak, that probably means you're either needing help with networking or you're just a go-getter. You're out there trying to learn more, trying to get ahead. How many other of your other classmates and friends are in bed now sleeping or doing other things? You're here learning about this. This is very important. This really tells me that somebody on this call right here someday, maybe ASC Texas section president, maybe a region six governor. So honestly, you may not think that. And if they would have told me that 20, 25 years ago, when uh, I would have taken this class, I would have said, no, there's no way. Yet here I am. Okay, networking basics. Um, we're gonna talk about when you meet someone, how to carry on a conversation, how to close that conversation, and then how to follow up afterwards. That's uh, one of the important things people don't, don't realize to do is to follow up. So meeting someone. Um, look for someone standing alone away from the group sometimes. Uh, practice a coffee pot chat. Um, just getting used to talking to people if you're not really comfortable talking with folks especially uh, your friends and, and coworkers once you start working. That's where it really starts. It, it really starts. Uh, be approachable, smile, make eye contact. That's really important. Um, name tags, use them when you're at a meeting. Always uh, put them on the right side of your shirt or jacket. And the reason why is because when you're shaking hands, you reach forward with your right hand to shake hands, your name tags kind of protruding out towards them makes it a little bit more noticeable. Also practice handshakes with both men and women. You, it sounds funny, it sounds weird, but um, grab with the fingertips, squeeze the hand, but not too hard. You don't wanna be a dead fish. You also don't wanna to try to break their hand. I've had people do both. And uh, don't turn your hand so that your hand is on top. That's kind of showing dominance. You wanna be kind of equal. So it, it, it sounds weird, but believe me, it will happen if you don't practice it. Uh, carrying on a conversation. So there's different kinds of questions. There's closed-ended conversations like, uh, um, what color is the sky? Blue. It's a one-word answer. It's not very open-ended. You really want to go for the open-ended questions. Try and get them to talk. Try and get them to communicate. Um, you want to look for conversation starters. Uh, find a common interest, uh, something that you both can identify with. Uh, use this to help remember them. And I'll talk about remembering them in a minute. Uh, but don't ask too many questions. It's not an inquisition. Uh, I remember, and Clay remembers, uh, we went to school together, and there was a guy, and he was always asking questions. He was His nickname was Question Boy. So whenever he came up, he just start asking questions all the time, and it's just like, oh, my God, here he comes. But uh, you, you got to find a balance. Uh, remember, the open-ended questions of who, what, when, where, why, uh, but the closed-answered questions, closed-ended questions are uh, yes or no or a one-word answer. Um, and then there's things to avoid. Um, you know, you don't ask, well, how old are you? Or have you ever done this? Things like that. Um, you don't want to talk about politics. Usually that's kind of a non-starter in today's uh, professional world. Um, everybody has their own opinion. Uh, it's just best to stay away from that. 
Uh, same with religion, same with intimate topics. Um, you can ask questions such as what projects are you currently working on? Um, what books do you like to read? Uh, why do you like you know, this movie? Uh, I know, for instance, my CEO, uh, he does not like sports. He doesn't follow sports. But he told me once that he, he reads the paper every day and he'll read the headlines in the sports section. That way, if he's ever in a conversation, he can intelligently you know, talk about, oh, yeah, I saw the Mavericks won last night. They won by 20 or whatever. At least you're knowledgeable about it. He doesn't follow sports. He doesn't like sports. But at least that helps with the conversation. Closing a conversation can be almost as important as just starting it. Um, you can start with things like I enjoyed meeting you. Uh, excuse me while I go get some coffee. Or I see a coworker that I need to catch up with. Um, also, it's very important to be able to get away or escape from monopolizer. Sometimes you'll get folks that want to just sit there and, and talk to you solely for a while, and you need to get out and talk with different folks. You don't want to sit there and just talk with one person the entire time. Um, so you got to be able to practice that and, and know how to get away from that person without you know, embarrassing yourself or without making a fool of yourself. Uh, business cards, very important. Always carry them with you. Put them in your wallet. Put them in your purse. You never know when you're going to need them, and you never know uh, when you're going to meet somebody that you really want to connect with and you give them a business card. I've been stuck many times without a business card. I'm like, oh, I wish I had one, and they're handing you a business card, and I kind of seem like a fool that I don't have my business cards with me. Um, but when you do the business card exchange, tell them why you want it. Um, you know, how can I get in touch with you? Uh, it's nice to meet you. Do you have a business card? One of the things that I like to do with business cards after I meet somebody is on the back of it, um, once, once I'm away from them, I may jot down a quick note or two about, you know, when and where I met them. Maybe something they talked about while I, I talked with them. Uh, they went to the same school I went to, or maybe they worked for uh, on a certain project that, you know, things that are not going to be on the business card. I might jot down some real quick notes. That way I remember later if I ever do want to follow up with them. Following up, very important. If you talk to someone and say you're collaborating while you're talking about maybe teaming up on a project or exchanging some information on something, make sure you do that. If you say, hey, I follow up with you or let's, let's talk, let's meet, let's have lunch, whatever, do, do that. Don't just say that. Make sure you call them or email them. Better yet, if you really want to impress that person, send them a handwritten note. How many times do you get a handwritten note? I, I can count on one hand in the last 10 years how many times I've got a handwritten note. When I get a handwritten note, I read that thing because I'm just like, this is strange. I'm, I don't get these very often. Whereas how many hundreds and hundreds of emails do I get a day? I may miss it. Same with phone calls. You can miss a phone call. But that handwritten note, man, it's, it's sitting right down your desk. You read it. It's thoughtful. It's personal. You may want to also mention how or when you met them, especially if it's somebody really important, say like a public works director or a city engineer. They're meeting, you know, hundreds of people probably a month. So you want to make sure they understand who you are and where you saw them and, and why you're following up with them. And again, make sure you keep your commitments. Send them in any information that you said you were going to send them if, if you did make that commitment. All right, time to get organized. So I talked about business cards. One of the things I like to do is I, uh, I've got a, a collection of business cards. I've got a plethora of business cards over the years. Um, a lot of times, if I see myself pulling out the same business card more than two or three times to contact them, that's when I usually put them into my Outlook uh, contacts. Otherwise, if you did that with every single person you meet, you may never even talk to that person again, and you got this huge um, list of people in your Outlook contacts. So I, I only kind of save my Outlook contacts with somebody I've I've talked to more than two or three times and I need to look them up. Um, make sure you, you, you jot down all your notes and memos. In Outlook, there's a, a notes feature, which a lot of people don't use, but I've started using it. It's really convenient. It's almost like having a bunch of yellow sticky pads all around your desk, but it's a lot more cleaner because it's in your computer. Um, your schedule. I live and die by my schedule, my calendar, and my computer. Um, that helps uh, schedule follow-ups. Um, you can you not only have to just put meetings in there, but just reminders of when you, you talk to somebody or when you need to follow up with somebody. Uh, I've got clients that I want to do a, a, a touch point with them quarterly just to stay in front of them because there could be work coming out at any time. Uh, I just went and met with the city of Waco last week. 
uh, was a former coworker of Clay and I's, uh, Steve Martin. He's the assistant city engineer there. And uh, I asked him, what's the best way to get work there? He says, come and visit us. If you, if you stay in front of us, we're going to remember you. And when work comes out, you know, if, you, if you're on our mind, you're probably going to get some of that work. So that's what I do. I, I try to stay in front of the, the clients. So put that on your schedule and use your tasks feature also in Outlook. I'm just listening. I'm not. What's that? Did somebody have a comment? All right. Here's some networking do's. Um, make sure you're listening. When you're out there doing a lot of networking, especially when you're younger, um, you need to be doing 80% of the listening and 20% of the talking. Uh, you don't want to really up turn that balance too much. You want to give other people a chance to talk. You want to be able to pay attention and, and maintain eye contact and, and gather the information. A lot of times you need to be in, in, in information gathering mode. You may have uh, competitors there at, at the same meeting uh, talking about projects or upcoming things that may interest you that if you're not sitting there listening and paying attention, you may miss it. And those could be important things that um, uh, you may miss. So always keep your ears open. Uh, same with your clients. Your clients may be saying something, hey, we've got an RFP coming out next month. You know, hey, I need to remember that. Write that down and, and talk to whoever may be going after that RFP. Uh, so always listen for business opportunities. Another thing is to think, then speak. That was one of my big issues growing up is I was always, I'd say something. And as soon as I said it, I'd have to pull my foot out of my mouth. I'm like, why did I say that? So make sure you think, then speak. Also maintain situational awareness. Um, you don't want to be the guy or the girl, you know, yelling, uh, having a grand old time. And everyone's kind of looking around at the meeting going, who is that? Because I know people like that. And yeah, they're fun to be around, but it's not very professional. I will tell you that. Make sure you mingle with others that you don't know. That's the worst thing you can do is uh, show up to, say, an ASC meeting, for example, and sit with all your coworkers. What are you getting out of that? You can sit with your coworkers anytime. You work with them. You see them every day. Go sit with somebody you don't know. Try to find other people. Now, if you want to bring a co a coworker with you and say two coworkers, that's all right because then both of you can kind of listen in and talk, and that way you still got somebody that you're comfortable with. But don't sit at a whole group of, of, of your friends that you already know. It, it doesn't. You're not getting any networking out of that. You, you're getting friendship, yeah, but you can do that anytime. Um, so seek out people you'd like to meet. Uh, you know, I'd like to seek out decision makers. Uh, between my clients, uh, possible teammates that I want to team with on projects. Uh, try to be a little outgoing, uh, relax, jot down some key notes if you get a chance to, uh, and then again, give out and collect business cards as needed. So the best networking I find is before or after a meeting. So my thing is to show up early. Because a lot of folks will show up early and that's your best time to network with them because during a presentation or during a, a luncheon, it's a little bit harder sometimes. So I like to show up a little early. Make sure you silence your cell phone, of course. You don't want to be that person with uh, the cell phone ringing during a presentation. Don't talk and don't gloat too much. Uh, you don't want to monopolize the conversation. Remember that 80-20 split I talked about earlier. Uh, don't say inappropriate things. I've been known to do that again. Think before you speak. Make sure you're not saying any kind of non, uh, avoid the non-PC issues and, and avoid any kind of work issues. And you can see the guy over there to the right with his, his bulletin board there. And those are things you probably need to avoid saying. And above all, never ever drink too much. Uh, I, I like to drink beer, uh, but I, when I'm in a professional environment, I try to stick to no more than two drinks. I don't wanna start saying things or acting silly that I'm gonna regret later. So just remember that. So use caution. Sometimes there could be over networking, uh, giving up too much information about clients. Uh, remember what I said earlier about listening about from competitors. Well, competitors could also get info from you. So um, be careful what you say when you're discussing your clients, your projects, or even your firm. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I had a girl that was interviewing with us and she interviewed great. She had a great resume 
And then I did a little bit of digging. I start, I Googled her, started looking up her social media. And lo and behold, there was a bunch of things on Facebook from her where she's just, she was trashed. She was falling off a stage at a concert. And I was just like, is that the type of person I want to hire? It just looks like it was going to be, you know, a bad fit in that world. So we avoided hiring her. And uh, you got to be really careful what you post on your social, social networking. Uh, you can tell this is an old presentation. I still got MySpace up there. I kind of do that as a joke, but most of y'all don't even remember what MySpace is. But you've got your Facebook, you got your LinkedIn, you got your Instagram nowadays. Uh, so there's a lot of different uh, social media platforms. Be, just be careful um, what you post out there. That's all I got to say is because once it gets out into the social media, it's hard to bring it back. All right, how to connect with people. So this is from a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This book is very, very old. It was in the early 1900s this book came out with. Um, so some of the things he mentioned in this book is become genuinely interested in others. Make sure you smile. And then one thing they said was a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. It sounds weird, but remember names. One of the things I have problems with is when I introduce myself to somebody and they tell me their name two or three minutes later I'll, I'll look at them and if they don't have a name tag on I won't remember their name I, I just have problems with names so I have to really focus when they tell me their name I, I look them in the face I try to take a mental image like, all right that's Scott that's Scott it, it, otherwise later on you're talking to them and, and if you don't know their name it, it's a little strange uh, be a good listener and encourage others to talk about themselves if you can Talk in terms of other people's interests and make the, make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. Don't be fake about it. People will know when you're fake. So that's all part of networking is being genuine. <clears throat> so we're getting to the fun part of the presentation now. So what, organi what organizations would you like to get involved with? So there's a lot of different organizations out there. And, uh, Y'all have already started this journey because you're already uh, participating in ASCE, but there's different professional, technical, social, educational, and civic organizations. Um, I'm involved with a lot of organizations, sometimes too much, so I, I've got to be able to pull back sometimes. But uh, here's just a few examples of different uh, organizations that you could become involved with. So make it um, make it a priority to, to look and see what's important to you to join. Again, you don't want to overcommit to too many things, so make sure you join things for the right reason. So once you join that organization, what do you expect to get out of it? Um, what will your employer get out of it? Because a lot of times, uh, one of the things I encourage folks is when you go to get hired, you ask your, your uh, employer, hey, what organizations will you, will you pay for? What will you help me with? Um, if they're not willing to help you pay for your ASC membership, you may want to honestly rethink who you're going to go work for because ASCE helps not only you, but the industry. It helps the employer through marketing and networking. Uh, my company, BGE, we sponsor a lot of things and we really focus on hiring ASCE um, folks because we know that they're outgoing. There's the best of the best, and uh, it's really a separator. So I really encourage you to make sure you go work for a company that will sponsor you in a technical, uh, a technical organization like ASC. It doesn't have to always necessarily be ASC, but I encourage ASC. When you're selecting that organization, again, be strategic, set some goals, and again, find some balance. You want to be active, but don't overcommit. You don't want to be just going to all these meetings all over the place. You want to kind of focus yourself on two or three things, possibly. Um, there's a lot of benefits of being involved, which I'll get to in a minute, but a couple of them are making connections and, and find resources. But above all, I always say this with everything, is to have fun. If you're not having fun doing what you're doing, whether it's where you work or organizations you're with, why are you doing it? Don't do it. Have fun doing whatever you're doing. So I'm going to give you an example. So I work for BGE. We used to be known as Brown and Gay Engineers. So this is some basic networking that you can start off when you're uh, interning or when you first start out at a company. 
So you have to be prepared to understand more about your company. So what services does that company provide? Who are some of your major clients and projects? What awards and recognitions has that company won? Where are your offices located? And what makes your company so special above all? Those are things you gotta be able to understand and know about. So um, make sure you research that company once you get started there and you can answer these questions. That way when people ask them, you're not sitting there going, I don't know, we, we, we design roads. You know, That's not an answer. You gotta be able to give them a good answer. Uh, you gotta also be able to network within your company. That's a good place to start is just networking with your coworkers because that kind of gets you out of your comfort zone a lot of times if you're not a good networker. You have to be able to understand what you do at your job um, in great detail. So if you're sitting there and someone says, well, what do you do at, at your company? I design culverts. That's not a great answer. What I would like to, for you to say instead is I've designed some of the drainage system for the Grand Parkway. It's over 50 miles of uh, outer ring road around the city of Houston. That sounds so much better. Um, also understand in great detail what your department does because a lot of companies will have different departments. All right, here's a little exercise. And this is where I would like people to turn on their cameras and turn on their mics. So let's say you're attending an awards banquet uh, where three companies are being recognized for a project. And you're sitting at a table designated for people that you work with. Uh, also attending the meeting is your CEO, your direct supervisor, and your department director. So you got a lot of, a lot of bosses there. And you've got a client, the county commissioner, and two other guests are sitting at your table. So I want you all to review the diagram on the next page and you're the first to arrive. Okay? And this is the table you know you're sitting at, so you're assigned to it. What seat should you select? And you can see there's the podium and the two screens. So I just wanna hear some folks chime in and tell me what seat you would sit in. Don't everybody answer at once. Um, hi, I think I would sit on number five. Okay, number five. Anybody else have an answer? Let me ask you why number five. Karina. Unmute yourself, Karina. I'm not letting it. Okay. I changed it. Let's pick. Let's check again. Try now. There you go. Thank you. Um, I say number five because personally it allows me to see everyone else, the screen and the podium. Okay. Does anybody else have an answer? I would do either four or six. Four or six. Okay. And why, why is that? Because usually like one could be considered the head of the table and then five since it's directly across. It's also usually like the head seat and then so then it's not towards the front and it's not at either of the two like main okay. okay. Does anybody else would sit in a different seat? We had, Play, three, we had seven and five in the chat as well. Yeah, I said seven just because I don't like sitting far away from the podium and the screens. Okay. But I still think it's a good angle and I'm not at any like heads. I'm right in the middle. So it's worse with everyone. Gotcha. Well, in this situation, and there's no wrong answer, there's no right answer, but I want you to at least sit and think about it. My thinking would be that I would want my guest of honor, the client, to probably sit in seat five. That's probably the best seat. They get a direct look at the podium. They can see the screen on either side. I'd probably want my, my CEO or one of my supervisors to be able to sit next to them in seats four or six. So my option would probably be three or seven, even two or eight if I had to. One would probably be bad because then you're sitting there with your back to everything. You can't see anything. So but you, you got to kind of judge with who you're sitting with, what the function is, what's going on. So don't always just grab seat five if you're the first one there. That sometimes could seem rude, uh, depending on if you know other people that are going to be sitting with you at your table. Um, if I'm sitting and I've invited a client and I know they're going to be sitting next to me, Again, I'd probably sit in four or six. That way my client could sit in seat five. So it's just something to think about. Again, there's no right or wrong answer, but at least it's something to think about. 
All right, dining etiquette. So uh, one of the fun things I got to do before I went to Texas A&M is I went to Blaine University for a year or two. And one of the classes I took was um, they had a dining etiquette uh, class. It wasn't like a formal class through school. It was like an after hours thing. And we got to sit and have a, a seven course meal. I'd never had a full seven course meal. And you had all the silverware, you know, on either side. And it was just amazing all the things I learned from it. So I always thought that this was kind of important because you're going to go to a lot of functions. And if you're sitting there being the Neanderthal with your elbows up on the table while you're eating, uh, you know, that you're, you're going to stand out. So just a few items here. Silverware, make sure you start from the outside and work your way in. Uh, make sure you place your napkin on your lap. Uh, whenever you're sitting there, food will always be served by the server from your left, but the dishes will be removed from your right. So something a lot of people don't know about. Um, the bread, usually when you sit down, they try to, you know, pre-COVID, of course, they would try to squeeze 10 people at this little itty bitty table and your knees are knocking and you're, you're hitting the tables uh, below. But um, you're sitting and you're looking, there's so many plates out there and you don't know whose drink is whose. And I've seen people grab the wrong drinks and then all of a sudden this person doesn't have a drink and there's an extra one now on the other side of the table. And Clay's laughing because it happens all the time. So what I do is I sit there and I go, it's going to look weird because I got to do it backwards. I do a B and a D like this. Bread, drink. Bread is always on your left and drink is always on your right. It's the best way to know. So if you're sitting there, you'll see some people do this sometimes. They'll sit down at an awards function and there's all kinds of plates and, and drinks and they're sitting there and they'll, they'll go B and D. Bread's over here, drink's over here. Uh, make sure you pass food from the left to the right. You know, if you're passing a basket, basket of bread or the butter, uh, keep your elbows off the table. Sound like your mother. Don't talk with your mouth full. These are simple things, but this is dining etiquette. Um, Jenny, do you know in the chat if I'm able to put a, a Word document or a PDF? Yes, you can attach a file. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up a file right now, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to post it right now, but I will before the end of this meeting. If all else fails, we can also attach it later in the Attendify in your session in the platform. Okay. So what this is, it's a little cheat sheet for dining etiquette. Not only does it have these rules, it's got a lot of other rules. I don't know why this is taking so long to open. But I will share this with everyone. Come on. All right. Can everybody see that? Can you see that? Okay, you can. So this has got a lot of different stuff about making reservations, how to use your napkin, uh, when to start eating, how to use your dining, your silverware, your dinnerware, and, and what glasses and what silverware is what. Again, work from the outside in. Um, one of the, here's some other social and dining etiquette rules. Again, I only put a couple on mine, so there's a bunch there. One of the things I thought was kind of neat, there's tipping right there. So here's a specific food type etiquette guide. So there's just weird types of food, artichokes, asparagus, you know, bacon, bread, caviar. How do you eat these things? Do you, okay, corn on the cob. I don't know if it's here, I thought it was. But how do you eat corn on the cob in a formal environment? You know, it, it's very weird. So some of these things will tell you kind of how you're expected to eat in a formal environment. So anyways, it's, it's just kind of neat to read through and, and look at. Like chicken, if you had a chicken leg, do you pick it up and just eat it like you normally would at a restaurant? Well, according to this, you're supposed to eat it with a fork and knife. You don't pick the whole bone up. You use your fork and knife and cut the chicken off the bone. That's just an example. So I will share that with y'all in a minute. All right, next we got to dress for success. So, um, there's uh, different definitions for different uh, dressing up affairs. So who knows, who can tell me what the difference between a black tie and a white tie event is? Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. oh, 
so black tie event is usually going to have formal attire. Men would wear tuxedos. Women would wear cocktail or long dresses or a dressy evening separates. I don't know what that is. But a white tie is ultra formal. It, uh, men wear full full uh, dress coats with white tie, vest, shirt, and women wear long gowns. This is very traditional. Um, you have black tie optional, semi-formal, cocktail attire, informal, casual. So I've got another uh, thing I will share with y'all that got definitions of different attire. So make sure you always dress for the event. You don't want to underdress, but you don't want to overdress. Um, I know a guy that he does not own a pair of black or blue slacks. Every time I see him out, he's wearing white, red, yellow. And it's just like, you're the loudest guy in here, always. And it's kind of cool. But if, if you're just starting out in this industry, you don't want to be that guy standing out, guy or girl. So always dress professional starting out. Um, for the guys, I would suggest you always have a spare tie and sports coat on hand at your work. I hang mine at the back on the back of my door. If I show up to work one day and all of a sudden I get called to an important meeting and I'm not formally dressed, I can at least throw on that, that tie and coat if I need to. Um, same, same with the women. If, if uh, you know, maybe you have a, a, a coat to wear uh, that can go over something that you want to keep at work in case you need to go out to a formal meeting and you're not dressed the best that day. So what's in it for me? Um, networking via ASC section and branches. So one of the things you can do when you go to ASC meetings is you can exchange ideas with some of your folks there. You can build your leadership skills. You can create long life professional content connections. And again, I always encourage you to get involved at the Texas section or at your branch. So, So how does this transfer into leadership skills? So you can see that some of the, your ASC experience is transferable into your work experience. And I will tell you that a lot of this stuff is important. Uh, the first couple of years in your uh, career, you're probably gonna be more on the technical side and learning out, learning what everything is. But as you, you, uh, as you develop throughout your career, you're gonna be on the marketing side probably. You're gonna be on the sales side. You're gonna be trying to, to sell what you're creating and what the people then you're leading are creating. So um, some of that can be built through ASC experience, such as fundraising or membership. Um, you know, you got your fiscal responsibility at ASC, building a budget if you're on a certain committee. And that can help you later on with setting priorities and building budgets at work. Uh, your presentation skills, if you give a presentation at ASC, can help you with your public speaking uh, while you're uh, at your profession. Of course, negotiating. Uh, I've had to do a lot of negotiating, a lot of contact co contract reviews with hotels and different venues through ASCE. And that's helped me at work to read through the contracts. A contract's a contract. It doesn't really matter. You still have your indemnification and things like that. And it's really important. And if you would have told me, oh, I got to learn about indemnification 20 years ago when I started, my eyes would have glossed over and I'm like, I just don't care. I'm not worried about that. Well, someday you will have to learn about it and you will uh, have to understand that type of stuff. So it, it's very basic legal language, but working through ASCs helped me understand that a little bit better so that I can apply it to my work environment. So one of the things I really want folks to do today is to make a commitment, uh, commit to join or re-engage a professional or technical organization within the next three months. And I think y'all are already involved with ASCE. Uh, I give this presentation uh, to a lot of folks uh, around the country. Uh, this is probably the 30th time I've given this presentation. So some of this stuff doesn't really apply to y'all because y'all are already involved with ASC. But I wanna make sure that if you are in ASC that you commit to being active within your organization Serve on a committee, uh, seek out volunteer opportunities, and make sure you're networking at your meetings. And uh, commit to network at your ASC meetings. Again, when you go to them, don't just sit around off to the side or just sitting there listening, but you don't want to also monopolize the conversation. Remember that 80-20 split I talked about earlier. So even though that says that's all, I do have some more here I want to share with y'all. Um, so. 
here's some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, the top 10 questions to ask someone when networking. These are just something that I'd come up with that I'd read. So I'm going to send these to everyone here in a minute. I talked earlier about the, the attire. Here's the definitions of attire. So when you get a formal invitation to something, you'll know what that means. Do I wear jeans to a semi-formal event? Uh, things like that. Um, but, but, but. I'm also going to send you this, the power of small talk. It's just got some little hints that you can look through. I'm not going to go into great detail, and y'all can read that. Not too long. I think there's five things on there. But since we've got about 10 minutes left, I want to go through a networking exercise with y'all. So again, let me open this up. So I want two folks to step up uh, on this call. I want somebody to play an outside engineer role. So uh, that engineer is gonna be a graduate engineer of a small city and that you worked for during the past three years. An engineer attempts to start a conversation with you before an ASC meeting. When you speak with him or her, you're not very interested in talking shop. You are more concerned with the college football game coming up this weekend, especially the one involving your, your school's team. You also find that this engineer went to your rival university that you dislike very much. So I wanna see some role play. Who wants to do it? This is your opportunity to show off your networking skills right now. And there's only what, 10 people on this call, 20 maybe? So don't be embarrassed. Jenny, can everybody uh, unmute? They should be able to, yes. Okay. Oh, Kevin looks like he's putting on his microphone. He's ready to go. You want to do it, Kevin? Nope. nope. <laughs> Are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I I fixed the problem. Well, I I, I need work, so. <laughs> okay. This I need to work on it, so I can do it. All right. Who else wants to try it out? I need two people. So Kevin and somebody else. I'll do it. Debika? Okay. okay. So uh, just strike up a conversation, 10 yard meeting. I, I just want to, we're going to critique it to see how, how it goes. So uh, Sabika, you're going to be the, uh, the uh, graduate engineer. And uh, Kevin, you're going to be the engineer who doesn't really want to talk. So Sabika, go ahead and strike up a conversation with Kevin. Um, I the one who's only interested in football? Or do I have the roles reversed? Um, I'm sorry. No, you want, to, you want to talk to them. You want to strike up a conversation. And Kevin is the one that doesn't want to really talk about much except college football. <laughs> But again, introduce yourself, to, say what school you go to and tend your rivals because you don't know that when you first start talking. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit confused. Am I, uh, am I playing Tom, am I? You're, you're playing hard to get. You, all you care about is the football game coming up. And okay. Sabika is trying to talk shop, trying to talk engineering and projects and things. And uh, all right. Hey, so are you excited about the football game coming up? Yeah, I I was uh, watching that. I, do you know uh, which two schools are playing? Uh, X school and Y school. Oh, that's awesome. I actually went to uh, X school. They have a really great engineering program. What about you? Oh, you know, um, I'm not good at. <laughs> oh, you're, you guys are killing it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did the engineering program, and but I'm, I'm super excited about you know going to this game. 
What's your team? Did you go to Y school? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having. Um, what team are, are you rooting for? Did you go to oh. schools? Yeah, a X team. Oh, nice, nice. How was their um, program? I'm guessing their football is great, but I'm curious to see what their engineering program was like. You know, actually, you know, I'm kind of disconnected from their engineering program, and I, you know, I'm just more and more involved with their football program right now. So that's cool. That's cool. Where are you uh, working right now? What are you doing? Oh, I'm at uh, Z Z Company, and uh, I'm a project man uh, project manager. That's awesome. Okay, I'll let I'll let y'all off the hook. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks, man. No, you guys did great. That so this is networking 101. So really, you're going to have difficult conversations like this. I, I've come up to folks that work for say uh, a city I want to work for, you know, and try to strike up, strike up a conversation with them. And they're just not interested in talking to me sometimes. It's always going to happen. And you got to be able to, to either make them a little more comfortable or you got to know when to walk away. Uh, you don't want to sit there and embarrass yourself either. So it, it's, a, it's a fine balance of, of, you know, picking up on the cues of the person. You know, they may be sitting there looking at the TV over the bar the whole time while you're trying to talk to them. And they're just looking off in the distance. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. I mean, that will happen. So uh, these are types of things you got to put yourself into these different scenarios. And this is kind of hard doing it virtually. We usually, we usually do this uh, in person. So um, does anybody have any questions on networking or any, any um, maybe experiences they've experienced? Even any of the older folks on the call, Lindsay, what have you experienced in networking? Okay, so if y'all don't know me, I am consider myself an extrovert and I like talking to people. Um, I did make the mistake of carrying on a conversation with somebody on an airplane once. Um, I'm fine to talk for the whole flight, but I started talking to this particular gentleman and asking questions and he was answering them, but the conversation was very one-sided. He it was talking pretty much the whole time and would never ask me questions in return. So eventually I was like, you know what? This isn't a very mutual conversation. This is just a guy talking at me instead of to me. So I eventually just stopped asking questions and said, you know what? This conversation is not productive in my head. I said that. And I was like, well, it was nice to meet you. I've got to do some work. And I did some reading or whatever it was that I had to do. Um, so yeah, it was important to know when to just let it go. Yeah, no, that's good. How about you, Clay? Do you have any experiences? Oh, plenty. <clears throat> I can say um, I'm, I've historically been a, an introvert and it's taken me a long time to come out of my shell. Um, and so I'd say there's a high likelihood of uh, the students we have on the call that are civil engineering students. A lot of y'all are probably introverts. We tend to be. Um, and two things really helped me come out of my shell. Uh, number one is that I have a little brother who can sell ice to the Eskimos. That guy can talk to anybody. And when I found myself in situations where I needed to come out of my shell and talk to people, I'd think, well, what would my brother Joey do? He'd go up, he'd shake somebody's hand, and he'd start a conversation. And so I started to kind of live vicariously through my brother, and, and that helped me a lot. Because it just kind of gave me a confidence I, out of nowhere, really. Um, and, uh, man, what was the second one? God, early on a Saturday morning. Um, practice. Practice makes perfect. Um, you know, being involved with ASC gives you plenty of that. Um, being able to speak in public gets you comfortable out in front of people. And I think that naturally segues right into networking and walking up to people out of the blue. Um, so, you know, just, it, it's, it's tough, but, you know, go out there and you'll learn there are certain topics you can start a conversation with just about anybody and be on solid ground. You'll learn what those are and practice makes perfect. Very good, Clyde. I appreciate that. How about you, Mark? Do you have any uh, words of advice? Mark Stark. Oh, 
I was trying to find the button. I apologize. It's all right. I, I could go on forever, Sean. Um, you, you, ne you never know until you take that first step. And uh, once you make that first step, you, I call it the first fearful fumbling footsteps forward. You take those and everybody's been there. Uh, we've all stepped over our own tongues. We've stepped on our own, stumbled over our own feet. So just take that leap of faith. Shake that hand. By the way, Sabika, that was great the way that you did that. Kevin, great job. Yes, very good. Kevin, what school do you go to? I'm a, uh, I go to Lamar University. Lamar, okay, cool. All right, excellent. I did, I did have a question. If, uh, sure. Um, so I struggle like when uh, somebody's monopolizing my time, and if it's somebody who's, um, I guess, in a leadership position over me, and I need to, you know, well, I want to respect everyone, but how, how can I? How, I, like, how do I lead that conversation respectfully if, that, if I were to yeah, were question? Good question. It is an art. And I think I, I had a slide earlier on monopolizers and monopolizing the conversation. Um, you got to be cognizant of how you're coming across to them because other people may be looking. Um, I'm going to give you an example. There was somebody that Clay and I went to school with, another person, and he always reminded me of an old cartoon where uh the the big bulldog's sitting there and the little dog's going hey spike you want to go get us a cat and he's like nah you know he was always the, the little kid off to the side almost he, he he was he was shorter but he always wanted to be a part of stuff and he was always kind of hyper and just he always wanted wanted to do things and we were like ah nah and some of the people that i was with used to make fun of him and i never did i didn't go out of my way to make really close friends with him but i also didn't didn't make them feel unwelcome. And years later, that person was a big wig at an agency and I needed to do some work with that agency. And when I reached out to them and talked with them, they actually said to me that, Hey, I remember back in school and I'm, I'm really glad you were, you were nice to me. You reached out to me. And I was like, I don't think I did that, but I also wasn't that person that was mean to them either. So I wish I would have been a little bit more nicer to him and I'm glad I wasn't mean to him, but you never know who you're dealing with now in your classes. And in, in, when you first start your career, that's going to be in charge of something big in the future that you need to be friends with. So again, don't do this to be fake, but be genuine in everything you do. Um, Cause you never know when it can come back to bite you. Um, but getting away from a monopolizer like that, you got to be patient. You got to listen to them for a little bit. You can't just walk away right away, you know, give them a couple of minutes and then you got to find a logical excuse. Hey, I need to use a restroom. I'll be right back. I got to go talk to this person or I got a phone call to make or something. You got, you got to make an excuse to get away from them. Something um, I've actually found that worked for, you say a boss in particular uh, who you don't want to you have to be really careful. You don't want to disrespect them. They're trying to impart some sort of wisdom on you. Um, I actually use the, um, and it's usually true. Um, I have this big project and I really, I'm prioritizing it right now. I'd like to get back to doing, working on it. Um, is there something else that you want to prioritize in my task list? Or I'll just go back to that one and keep it as my task list. So going back to work and that you're making an effort to monopolize your time, at the task priority. Um, and that every time. Oh, yeah, yeah, please do. I don't want to interrupt you every time. Obviously, Jenny, that was a previous employer. <laughs> of course. Lindsay would never do that. I think I do it to her. <laughs> All right. So everyone, just so you know, in the chat box, I posted those four things I said I was going to post. So feel free to download those and use those as you need to for the dining etiquette and the food and uh, the attire and the other things in there. Um, but... We probably got one more time, one time for one more question. Does anybody have another question? I guess with that, um, I'll leave this slide Nobody up. To thank our sponsors. And again, look right there. What is the first sponsor? BG, the company I work for. So you got to get out there. And market, you got to network. This is part of networking. I'm wearing my BGE hat today. I got my ASC shirt on. 
So uh, hopefully I've made an impression on you, but if you're out there at a networking event and you've got your BGE shirt on or whatever shirt you're wearing, you don't want to embarrass yourself. So you're, you're doing that with pride. You've got to make sure you're representing ASCE, BGE, your school, whoever you're working for, you've got to represent them. So keep that in mind whenever you're networking. That's all I got. Yeah, thank you, Sean, for that extremely comprehensive presentation that covered a lot of topics. I thought that was very, very valuable. Um, and thank you for everybody who was willing to. Um, with that, we have a few minutes left, but I believe we'll be staying in the same Zoom room um, for our next Power Skills presenter, Mr. Mark Stark. And I'll, uh, uh, I'm assuming he'll be introduced right around 11 o'clock. So thank you all. All right. You want to end the recording? I am. All done. Thank you.